Okay. Okay, check this out. That's too, that's, that's too big of a blanket statement. If you said a it's state, that would have been so for much sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> No, no, I'm 100%. I agree with you. I agree with you. But now, now think about this. <laughs> Is Dr. Stephen Greer the most honest person out here? <laughs> no, 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 no. For real, though. So he's saying... Okay, look, all right, so you and I are like, dude, this is so messy. Everyone's lying. What are you doing? Right, sure, right? Sure, sure. I love that I'm bringing it back to UAPs. So Dr. Stephen Greer is like, there's legacy mainstream media and people who are mm. sellouts, mm. like Joe Rogan's a sellout. And I'm like, oh, what do you mean, bro? Because like, he's like, in order to get the Spotify deal, he had to take certain episodes off. So to get the $100 million, right. he, had to, he had to take some episodes down. And one of the episodes was Stephen Greer's episode. So you could still find the episode online, mm-hmm. but in order to get the hundred million dollars, you have to take down his episode. You're like, why? Why his episode? And why hasn't anybody put Stephen Greer on the mainstream media? Because Stephen Greer is saying that there is a cabal of people that are keeping this money in power of, of others in order to like keep the rich rich and the poor poor. Mm-hmm. Right. And this is a great example because he, like Stephen Greer's like, oh, the Tesla doesn't, the, the Tesla, Elon Musk Tesla doesn't operate like a real Tesla because it w- it's still being powered by coal, you know? And like, why are we doing these reverse engine thrusters for Elon Musk if we already know how to reverse engineer gravity and then like make these new ships? So what, what Stephen Greer is saying is that there are people in positions of power mm-hmm. and they're being paid off by the oligarchs like the the oil industry owners in order to keep the status quo right is that real because now i'm like bro you j- we just we just <laughs> figured out a psyop and i'm like Stephen Greer's the only one that's saying that mm-hmm. that like dude this is a psyop everything you're seeing is a lie and i'm like is it a goddamn lie bro because that's kind of weird that Elon Musk was saying that. And even I believe in it. Again, mm. it's like, but maybe that's what makes me a great marketer. I fall for the marketing. And then when we, <laughs> you and I reverse engineer it, we're like, this is kind of a lie. Hold on. And then you like figure out how you got caught in the lie. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like all, everything I'm seeing is kind of like, so all right, what Stephen Greer is saying is this. Mm-hmm. The reason why they're coming out with UAP stuff now, like you see Lou Elizondo, his book, Jeremy Corbell, they're having um, another hearing next week. Um, I think Stephen Greer is a part of that hearing. Like he really does believe that you can change things through the government, but he's saying that there's two camps working here and they're both fighting for disclosure. But Stephen Greer is fighting for disclosure to the point that we have universal energy and we have peace on earth, Mm -hmm. a utopia. Sure. Right. Whereas Lou Elizondo is fighting for disclosure, but delayed enough so that they can create patents towards these products. And then by the time the disclosure fully reveals itself, well, we already have patents, so we own this gra- this gravitational technology. So what... Oh, yeah? Okay. No, no, no. I heard some other thing about Lou Elizondo. As you said, that he's still part of the FBI or whatever. Yeah, yeah CIA. Yeah. Or CIA. That he's still... This is still, like, their mission. Project. Project. This is still their project. CIA project. Yeah. But he's all doing it. For them. For them. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a he's a uh, um, he's still a spy. Yeah, yeah. He, what do you call that? He's a disinformation agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people have been saying that too. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like, and like that's why Stephen Greer is like, I don't want to sign any NDAs because if I do that, then I can't tell people what's really happening. Whereas Lou Elizondo, he signed NDAs. He can't say certain things, so he's painting himself to be. But remember this: there's, um, dude, this is so crazy. Honestly, I would if if I get assassinated <laughs> or something, they're like, come out of these bodies and be like, hey, this guy's telling too many people about this, right? Um, not that I'll think I'll get assassinated, but you never know. So uh he Lou Elizondo was a part of Gray Fox. Mm-hmm. So I heard this in passing. Um so there's a dude, um, uh, Michael Oh, I forgot what his name is. American Alchemy. That dude. Jesse Michaels. 
So he he did a like a whole video of Lou Elizondo, and then one thing that stuck out to me was Gray Fox because I was like, oh, that's a yeah, Metal Gear Solid term, right. remember, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And what is Gray Fox's job? They go into the battlefield before anyone gets there to mm-hmm. set the battlefield up so that when Delta Force arrives, they can come in and manage things, right? Right, so like they like they send in this small covert unit, literally Metal Gear Solid the video game, in order to set pieces in place so that when, when um, when like Delta Force, like the Navy SEALs, they actually come in, they're able to like win the battle because mm-hmm. everything's been already set up. Right now, take that into what you just said, which is he's still under contract by CIA. Mm-hmm. Is he prepping the battlefield of this psyop? Possible. Yeah. Right? Until the point when they figure out, hey, we've gotten all these patents. All right, tell people that it's gravitational propulsion technology. Like, all right, cool, man. We're going to make our own gravitational like cars. Hold up. We own the patents for those gravitational cars. Mm-hmm. So what, what Stephen Greer is saying is that they know cats out of the bag. We know that UFOs are real. But now what you need to do is how do you capitalize on the new resource that's about to come? So it's not going to be oil and gas anymore. It's going to be gravity propulsion. But who owns gravity propulsion? Mm-hmm. That's the real question. That's literally what Stephen Gray's been saying. Mm-hmm. And now, as we're having this conversation, I'm like, bro, it might be true. Mm-hmm. Simply because we proved that Elon Musk was lying. And you saw how he does. Oh, man, I'm telling how, how you're tell he's a liar. <laughs> he's a liar. Elon Musk is a liar. Maybe he is Elon. Maybe he is Lex Luthor, though, not Tony Stark. Right. <laughs> now I'm scared. Or what do you think? Or it's. What did there's no, another like thing? No, we're all you know long enough. They all turn bad, like kind of thing. Like oh yeah, yeah. um, you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. villain. Yeah, because he started off great, mm-hmm. but then he knows certain things. Because like he is saying, I have no evidence of UFOs, bro. You have satellites everywhere. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. And I really believe, and it's in line with what Stephen Greer is saying, which is. He's like, all of these are ours. Everything you're seeing, these UAPs, like sure, there are some like uh, ETVs, extraterrestrial vehicles, but all of them are, um, I forgot the term, like basically it's just reverse engineered extraterrestrial vehicles. And it's like, if you think about it, just let's think about it logically. In 20, 2007 or something, 2003, the Tic Tac incident, right? They saw... The fighter jets saw a Tic Tac. Mm-hmm. They went in a combat formation with the Tic Tac. They were like having a battle, right? One, how do you know what a combat formation is if you're from a different planet? Right. Okay. Right. Like, how do we answer that yeah, question? Yeah, yeah. Sure. I don't know. Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have the context mm-hmm, of mm-hmm, battle yeah. formation. If you're on a new planet. Okay. And then they said that all of a sudden the Tic Tac disappeared. And then when they flew back to their cat point, which is a secret rallying point where they're going to meet up after the mission, the Tic Tac was already there. So how do you, if you're an off world species, know what a, what a cat point is. Mm -hmm. Unless you understand battle formations and what cat points are. And you're from this planet. Mm -hmm. So this reverse engineered Tic Tac understands the rules of the game. Right. That's logical, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now now take into this piece. When the 2000, whatever the Tic Tac incident, 2000 something, Stephen Greer is like, I went through my catalogs and I found an old photo of the Tic Tac. That's ours. Mm -hmm. It's making sense, bro. True, yeah. (laughs) But then you have fighter pilots that are like, I have no idea what this is because they don't know what it is. It's but again, it's like, it's, black. it's need to know. Yeah. Exactly. It's a Beyond Black project. Sure. Right? So then, um, okay, so then those pieces in place, it's like you have the story of those whistleblowers. Remember I told you like they, they found these like, um, these like uh, people in, uh, was it Malaysia or something? They mm-hmm. stumbled across it. And then you were saying like, oh, the, the unit said that that actually didn't happen. Michael something. Oh, oh, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So they found like, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's like, oh, I, I encountered these like army individuals. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. literally the last podcast if you yeah. want to, yeah. if you're listening to it, you're like, what are you guys talking about? Last podcast. Um, so 
So that already logically makes sense to me. I'm like, actually, that makes sense. And then you you telling me that they're trying to patent things before they release it worldwide to the public so that people who patent it get to make money. That makes sense to me too. Mm -hmm. We found the TR3B patent on Google. If you just Google TR3B, you're like, yeah, there's a patent for re gravity propulsion triangle technology, which is what links up to what we see and we call it a UFO. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. Ryan Graves is another whistleblower who's like, he's a fighter pilot as well. And um, he's the one who saw, I, think, I don't know if it's the gimbal, but he started a podcast called Merged. Okay. And what that was, was they took all of these air, aeronautics people who have been seeing these UAPs around, right? So he would say, he said that every day they would do these combat formations as practice and these like spherical orbs. Like, remember I told you translucent circle and then there's a square inside, mm -hmm. right? And then they're all over the place. There's like hundreds of them around the, the training facility. And he's like, what are these? We're going to hit them. Well, if they're all over a training facility, wouldn't you suspect that they're your products mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. beyond black? And then he's like, well, I'm reporting it to my seniors, and the seniors are just telling me to ignore it. Probably because the seniors know it's beyond black projects. And they're like, you're just a fighter pilot, bro. You don't need to know what this is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of need that? to know. I'll agree with there's a lot of need to know, of course. Yeah. Okay. You know what's crazy? They took down Ryan Gray's podcast on Spotify. I went back to go listen to it. And it's gone. And I was like, well, that's weird. Mm -hmm. And I think it's only on YouTube. But it's a little weird that that's gone. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? Bro, maybe Stephen Greer is the only one who's correct. <laughs> maybe. Right? Like, logically speaking, because I'm, I'm like a but little he's, Yeah, it's, it's very weird that he's um, blacklisted from... Like, why isn't anyone talking about him? I don't know. But yeah, all these celebrities. But like, it's right? both sides. I'm talking about both sides. Like, of course, the sides that doesn't care about UFOs, sure. But like, within the UFO side, like all of a sudden he's hated. Yeah, that's all I say but, on on Reddit. Right, and he said that they're gonna smear campaign me because I'm the only one telling the truth. <laughs> and I'm like, are they, dude? It kind of seems like if you just like, watch they, it, you yeah, I don't. It. Yeah, but then they both are saying that he's a dis disinformation agent. They're both. Who? Aren't they like, why aren't they talking to him? No, 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 no. So Lou Elizondo is saying that he's crazy. Okay. Doesn't know what he's talking about. And then Stephen Greer's like, yeah, well, because Lou's a disinformation agent. Okay. Right? So Tom DeLong, he, this is crazy. So Tom DeLong, he spent time with Stephen Greer to mm. learn about all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, Tom DeLong started hanging out with the CIA people. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Stephen Greer has said, like, yeah, he used to spend time in my house. I'd explain all this stuff to him. And then all of a sudden he got co-opted because he, he's such a naive mind. He got co-opted by this psyop that they're playing and they're using him as a patsy to get UFOs out to the world. But Tom DeLong mentioned his the name Blake, before. Blake too. Yeah, no, no, yeah I he did. He did. He did. But he did it like, it's like, we will never speak about this. He, he He's like... <laughs> It's weird. No, no, because I went through all of Tom's podcasts and then like somebody just blatantly asked him. I think it was the theories of everything. Somebody uh -huh. finally blatantly asked him about, well, what do you know about Stephen Greer? He's like, he's like, I can just say that I would be wary if uh, I would look into That's all he said. And I was like, that's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. And then Stephen Greer's like, well, I hung out with Tom Long all the time, blah, blah, blah. I showed him everything. And then Tom will like admit to it, but he won't like admit to it. He'll be like, yeah, I, I hung out with a lot of people in the UFO space in the beginning. And then like, I, I went camping and did this meditation in the forest, but he didn't say it was Stephen Greer. He just, but that's Stephen Greer's program mm -hmm. where you like meditate in the forest and you call these UFOs to you. It's called the CE5 app and stuff. Um, but like, it's kind of weird that Tom DeLong is like, I feel like he's being played, but he's also just a pop star. Like he's a like punk rocker. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think all he cares about is like admitting to the world that they're UFOs. But what Tom has said is like, there's a huge story here that's scarier than we can imagine. And it's like, people are battling for something. But I feel like Tom's like an objective. He's like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to tell you that there's a battle. And then it's like, is it Lou versus Greer? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think? It's logical, right? I think that if there is something, 
think the CIA would be involved in trying to uh, control the story.